What's this I hear? Julia Child has a hamburger recipe. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. I'm in volume one today. And I was just like skimming through it and I found this. Minced beef hamburgers. Shock is the reaction of some people we have encountered who learn that real French people living in France eat hamburgers. They do eat them. And when sauced with any of the suggestions in the following recipes, the French hamburger is an excellent, relatively economical main course for an informal party. I'm not expecting an American hamburger or McDonald's or whatever the hell. No, au contraire, minced beef with onions and herbs. There's gonna be much more emphasis on the meat, less on the bun today, no bun. So to add a little more substance to the plate at the end, I wanna tack on some stuffed mushrooms. There it is. Stuffed mushrooms make a good hot hors d'oeuvre or a garnish for a meat dish. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty damn good meal for me. New cookbook holder. Three ounces, 85 grams. Chopped up onions, very finely. Medium heat, frying pan. Ounce of butter. Butter's foaming, add in the onion. So for around 10 minutes, cook these until they are very tender, but not browned. So a pound and a half, 680 grams of a lean minced beef. That's what this is. As Julia describes here, the best hamburgers are made from the leanest beef. So perfect. And need a mixing bowl. Beef goes in, as does the onions, like a teaspoon and a half of salt. And then one eighth teaspoon of pepper. Time for the fresh thyme. One eighth teaspoon of that too. One egg to bind it all together. It says beat vigorously with a wooden spoon, but I don't mind just getting my hands in there. An ounce of softened butter or pork fat. I forgot, I forgot. Form into patties three quarters of an inch thick. It says six, but since I'm slightly under what she was asking for, maybe five. Let's do four. Three quarters of an inch thick. One, two, three, four. I'll wash this. Cover that with some wax paper. Throw these in the fridge until I need them. As evident with the mushrooms in front of me, I, you bet, you guessed it. Moving on to the stuffed mushrooms. So it says do 12 of these. I'm gonna half this. I think that's gonna be smart. These really aren't that dirty. So you're not, this is gonna be a Jamie and Julia first. I'm not gonna wash them. Just gonna pat them, just rub, rub the shit off them. Take the stem out. Get these on a baking dish. So I brush these with melted butter. I'm just presuming all over. And you know what? I should probably butter up this dish as well. Place them hollow side up and sprinkle lightly with salt and pepper. Just put those off to the side. Stems from the mushroom caps, finely chopped. You know what I gotta do? this old thing here. Get them up in a fresh cloth and squeeze the hell out of them and extract these juices. And that always fascinates me. We'll need another onion, three tablespoons worth. Finally chop it up. Spring onion or a shallot. Probably should have picked up the spring onion because I feel like this is very similar to this. I mean, tomato, tomato, almost. Need three tablespoons of this chopped. This one is probably a little sweeter, right? Half an ounce around 16 grams of Parmesan cheese. Grated, of course. Gruyere cheese, same amount. Tablespoon and a half of plain white breadcrumbs. Two tablespoons of chopped parsley. I think I'm ready to go to the stove. Okay, let's just use this frying pan. Heat on. Half an ounce of butter. 
chopped onion. Add in a little oil as well. Oops, forgot about the oil. Got to saute for a couple minutes, but I don't want that to turn brown. <sighs> Next up, add in the chopped shallot and you know what? The mushroom stems. This is gonna be on a moderately high heat for six to eight minutes. The mushrooms need to dry up and kind of separate from each other. Okay, mushroom pieces have started to brown. Add in a little hit of, uh, oh. So I got Julia's favorite Madeira wine and I'm just gonna add a little hit into this. Just a little bit. Boil that down rapidly. Once that has basically evaporated, I'm gonna turn the heat off. And I add in my breadcrumbs, cheese, chopped parsley, a little hit of dried tarragon, pepper, salt. Tablespoon at a time, add in a little heavy cream, like a tablespoon and a half, how about that? Two tablespoons. And I just gotta blend that all together until it kind of comes together into a shape. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's perfect. Take the mushroom caps and stuff them with this stuffing. A little bit more grated Swiss cheese on top. Just a little, come on. Why not? Live a little. It says here, lastly, add drops of melted butter on top of this. I personally do not think it needs any more butter. So I'm just gonna not do that. Okay, you've convinced me, but just a little. Some drops of melted butter, it's not a big deal. Just oh, drops, just a couple drops, just a couple drops. See, harmless. 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Gotta bake these for 15 to 20 minutes, probably 15, until the caps are tender and the stuffing has browned lightly on the top. Upper part of the oven. We're moving on to the hamburgers. Some butter and some oil. Medium heat. I need to film the bottom of this frying pan with both fats. Put some flour on a plate and I take my burger patty, lightly, just very lightly roll it around in the flour, shake off the excess. How about that? That works. I just made this up and it works perfectly. So when the butter begins to foam, that means it's hot enough for those. I'm aiming for, I like my burgers around medium well. I like my burgers cooked, two to three minutes per side. I think they're in need of a good basting. It's my idea. Hell yeah. Once a good crust is formed on either side, these bad boys are done. Mushrooms are done. Right. Keep these warm. The oven's turned off. I'm gonna keep these in there until I need them. But I'm gonna keep the door ajar. Do you think we're done yet? We're not. We still have a little... Ow. We're not quite done yet. Pour the fat out of the frying pan. Get the heat back on. Quarter pint, a hundred and something milliliters of beef stock. And I gotta boil that down. Scraping up all the good stuff, all the coagulated stuff on the bottom. It's turned into almost a syrup. Add in some room temperature butter a little at a time until that absorbs into the sauce. This gotta be away from the heat. Yeah, I'm gonna put both burgers on this plate. Hell yeah. Okay, that ought to do it. Order up. I think the word to say for this is Moorish. I haven't used that one yet, but I believe that's what you say when you really, really like something and you want more of it. Those burgers were just so much more than just your regular burger patty. There was uh, like, <clears throat> they just unleashed so much flavor. 
tsunami of flavors. Uh, yeah, okay, a tsunami of flavors. Every time you took a bite, it was just like, uh, it was just super savory. I mean, it's so much more than just a standard burger patty. It stands out on its own without the assistance of, you know, ketchup and mustard and cheese and pickles and lettuce, tomatoes and a bun. It's just like, all you need is the patty and you just pour over a little of that sauce and it was perfect. That all being said, I would like to try that as like a typical hamburger. I think that would just be freaking sensational, sensational. Made a lot of mushrooms on this show, but it was nice to try something new. That filling I found was really fresh with all that parsley and uh, with cheesy, of course, too. And they were very tender and soft, umami heaven. I've said a lot of words tonight. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Over on. On my Patreon this week, I have a whole collection of things building, Q&A videos, behind the scenes, live streams, and this week I'm gonna be doing a, another live stream, but I'll be watching my older videos with my patrons. This is gonna be a lot of fun. If you wanna join me for that, you gotta sign up for my Patreon. It should be linked right here, or in the description.